Hola, hola guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Roxanne. If it's your first time here, then welcome. Today, I want to do my Latinx Heritage Month wrap up. So, the first book that I want to talk about is Dominicana by Angie Cruz. So, this is about a young woman, Ana, who is living in the Dominican Republic and as a means to get a better life for her and for her family she is sort of married off to this older man um from this family of brothers who have a business and who sort of are have their thing that you know their lives together and are, are doing great things and making a lot of money and she's married off to this man and sent off to new york to be his wife and hopefully be able to help her family join her and um you know make things better for them and it is so it's a story about immigration it's a story about uh that sort of um transactional nature of some relationships like i'm doing this in this relationship in order to get this out of this relationship it's about family obligation um it's about youth womanhood um Latinidad and what all that means when you're a new immigrant in, in New York, um, the the vast differences in uh, just culture wise, and it is beautifully written and these characters come to life and feel very real and um, touch on a lot of very difficult important topics. Um, overall, I really really enjoyed it. I will say the main thing that I didn't like about it is that it use the r word um but oh, oh you know other than that i really enjoyed it trigger warnings on this for um domestic abuse i read fruit of the drunken tree by ingrid rojas contreras and this one takes place mostly in colombia and it is about um our main character chula and her um this sort of caretaker that her mother hires um called petrona who seems to be involved in things to do with at the time um pablo escobar and the sort of drug um issues that were going on in colombia and the fear that citizens lived under and the absolute power that he had and the corruption that was present in the country and so it's about how they navigate their lives um under this cloud of of just social issues that are going on in colombia and how their um their political their their economic stance in life makes it so that they have they see life and they experience life very differently um but it's also about how these two worlds and these two ways of living collide and it is so beautifully written it is magnificent this is a debut um and it just feels like we're gonna get so many amazing things out of ingrid rojas contreras um it felt very alive it felt very gripping and um I was scared for these characters and I worried about them and I and I immediately connected with them and I, re I really just felt for them and um, I think it does a great job of um, there is they do eventually move to the United States so again it becomes an immigration story but not a lot of focus is on that it's mostly about their life in Colombia um, but even that is also dealt with um, with a lot of sensitivity and um with insight into what it is like to be an immigrant and, and the things that you're forced to give up and um everything from sort of assimilation to how how you view then your past life and i i loved pretty much everything about this and i highly recommend it I read The Affairs of the Falcons by Melissa Rivero. This is another immigration story, this time from Peru. Um, yes, so we have Ana again, another main character named Ana and her husband Lucho. They're living with Lucho's cousin um, because through, because of money issues, they've they've had to move out of what was their apartment. And so they're, move, they're living with uh, Lucho's cousin who deeply resents 
them being there and doesn't like it and sort of makes a point of constantly letting Anna know about it and then Anna feels like she takes care of this home better than the actual owner of it and so she feels um a little bit entitled to some things in that home and so it's that that fight of it's not really her home but the things that she does for the home um almost make it like she should have certain rights in that house um this is all going on while Anna and Lucho are trying to fight for their livelihood in this country and trying to do what's best for their but for their kids but it's also about such stark differences in in the ways of viewing um one's choices and one's marriage and one's family um between Anna and Lucho they they just see their lives very differently they want very different things it's about the lack of communication between them as a couple and I I will admit I didn't connect entirely to Anna as our main character for maybe about halfway a half of the book I was interested in what was going to happen and I, I sort of wanted everything to be okay but I didn't feel for them like I felt for Ana and Dominicana or for Chula in um, Fruit of the Drunken Tree but then <clears throat> after that halfway point um, it became more um, urgent and that's when I really started to feel for them and and these these stories are really heartbreaking um, in this one um, I think there's a lot of very difficult sort of um, sexual situations between individuals that are difficult to read about and while um, I, it's not necessarily rape it's it's like sh Anna does certain things for the betterment of her family um, and she kind of puts herself in these positions where she doesn't want to be but she feels she needs to be in in order to um to for their family to progress so it's 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 very it's a very weird situation it doesn't feel right it feels very icky and disgusting um so just be aware of that but uh overall at the end of this i was heartbroken because again we got another heartbreaking story here and it really just goes to show everything that a mother is willing to do for her pa for her kids and what detriment the lack of communication can have in a marriage. Um, then I read my favorite of this whole month, which is Cantoras by Carolina de Robertis. I love this book so much. I've raved, raved about um, Carolina de Robertis' de Robertis is writing um it continues to be as evocative dreamlike atmospheric as it has been in the last in the other two books of hers that i've read this is amazing this is about a group of five i believe um women who are who are queer women in uruguay in a time when a lot of socio-political turmoil is going on and it is illegal for them to be the way they are and and love who they love and so um they sort of come up with this little idea to go off in in a little trip of themselves to in this um sort of seaside town and they find freedom there and they find the 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 freedom to be who they are and to love who they are and to just be themselves and be friends and they forge this amazing beautiful bond this this uh, sort of chosen family bond and friendship that leads them and supports them through the rest of of their lives um war trigger warning for this for sexual assault and uh torture and suicide and um domestic abuse it's it, it has a lot of it has a lot of difficult topics within it sorry something something moved in my kitchen there's a ghost um <laughs> it deals with a lot of difficult topics but it does so um always 
letting you kind of hold on to the friendship of these women and they guide you through the story and it is just beautiful their lives are beautiful and heartbreaking and there's so much passion in these pages i really can't say enough good things about it i absolutely love it i love her writing i love every single one of these characters i felt so much and so hard for every single one of them i still think about them and i love that we get to follow them through so many years and and sort of we we see the changes in the socio-political um situation in uruguay we see um sort of the present day of of young advocates and how their relationship with these older women who lived these very particular very difficult days and situations and and the proud the, the pride they feel when they see you know people our age being able to be more of ourselves <clears throat> and i mean it's just it's it's beautiful it everything about it is beautiful and i loved it so so much um then i read um a collection of short stories called sabrina and corina i don't physically have a copy of this so i'll just show you the cover so it's sabrina and corina by cali fajardo anstein this book has been shortlisted now for the national book award which is really awesome and it is a collection of short stories sort of having to deal with the midwestern latina ex latinx experience and the indigenous latinx experience um and the indigenous experience um <clears throat> and it was beautifully written and of course like always in in uh short story collections you will like some more than others but overall as a collection i think i felt that it was cohesive and it talked about a lot of very important um aspects of latinidad and womanhood um family motherhood again that for this familial obligation i think that's some that's a theme that's very prevalent in um latinx fiction just because of our family dynamics and what's expected of of children um I think that you sort of can't um, not find it just constantly um, being present in Latinx uh, literature and I think that all of these dealt with it all actually every single one of these books dealt with that um, either the embrace of of this um, duty or the the turning away of it um, and I think they all do it in, in unique and, and powerful ways um, I enjoyed the, the short stories and I didn't uh, they didn't grip me and I didn't fall in love with them as much as I did with some of these other stories um, but I think that's just the format I, I tend to really be able to to connect more with full fleshed out novels rather than short stories but I can see um, its merit and I, I loved the writing and I, I think it talks all about so many di uh, different and very important topics that I you know I see why it has gotten the praise that it's gotten and I still really highly recommend it. So those are the books that I read for Latinx Heritage Month. I loved this month. I loved being able to see what everybody else was reading and share so many books online and, and do the content that I did. So thank you for watching and for listening as always. I love you guys very much.